There are a lot of unsolved animal mysteries in the world, and some strange animal behaviors that science has not been able to explain. There is also a lot of things we know to be true, but never realize that science hasn't answered the how or why. So today, we are going to have some fun exploring some of the simplest questions in the animal kingdom that science still can't explain. And for some extra fun, find our mascot net hiding throughout the video. Why don't blue whales get cancer? Cancer is the mutation of cells causing uncontrolled growth. And unfortunately, it's seen in most animals. The argument goes like this. The more cells an animal has, the higher their cancer rates should be. Humans have one of the highest rates of cancer in the animal kingdom, but we probably need to be excluded from this generalization since we create and consume a lot of the cancer-causing agents that other animals are not exposed to. Peter's paradox says, since blue whales are the biggest animals on Earth, they should have the highest cancer rates, but they don't. We know cancer is caused by changes to DNA, but what science can't answer is which DNA changes lead to uncontrolled cell growth. We've seen that certain animals like elephants, naked mole rats, and whales have much lower cancer rates. But we still don't know why. Cows are picky eaters. Do you have a favorite chair at the dining table? Or maybe when you go out to eat, you don't like to sit with your back to the door. We humans have our own little quirks when it comes to eating. But thanks to Google Maps, we found out that other animals do too. Scientists went through thousands of satellite images studying cows around the world. And they noticed something strange. It turns out that cows align themselves with Earth's magnetic poles facing north or south whenever they're grazing or resting. This was true in all the continents, regardless of wind or changes in weather. The only variation was that the closer they were to the poles, the less accurate the alignments were. Now, the challenge for scientists is to figure out why. Why is there so much life near the equator? With the freezing temperatures and lack of food, we understand why there isn't much life at the North or South Poles. We also know that there are many types of plants and animals adapted to live in various conditions all across our planet. What we don't know is why there is so much more life near the equator. It is a fact that biodiversity increases as you approach the equator. This is true for plants and animals and even bacteria and viruses. Because of this, the majority of deadly viruses outbreaks originate in the equatorial regions. But scientists cannot explain why there is more biodiversity near the equator than any other place on Earth. There are over 30 theories that try to answer what seems like a simple question. The problem here isn't the lack of information, but too much information. The number of life forms we will have to study before we could even begin to make comparisons makes it almost impossible to even find an answer to this mystery. Animal migration. There are lots of reasons why animals migrate. Some do it to find better food sources as the season changes and others migrate to laid eggs. Some animals like brown bats travel to find a place to hibernate and other animals are just looking for warmer weather. We know why most animals migrate, but we don't know how. Different animals use different tricks to get from point A to point B. An example would be homing pigeons and sea turtles. We know they use the Earth's magnetic field to navigate, but we don't specifically know how. Scientists think animals use lots of different skills and strategies to get around. Some utilize landmarks like rivers or streams. Others may use the position of the sun and stars to navigate. Some animals, like seabirds, simply follow their nose. They actually somehow use their senses of smell to navigate the open ocean. And we have no idea how. Cat's purr. 
cats are broken into two groups, those who roar and those who purr. If you own a cat or spend any time around them, you probably can't imagine that a purr is one of the biggest unsolved animal mysteries. How a cat purrs was only solved within the last few years. It turns out muscles twitching in the cat's throat cause a separation of the vocal cords, which leads to the purr. But two big questions still remain. What triggers a cat's purr and why do they do it? I think the why is the more fun and answer question. I feel like if we could figure that out, we'll be a lot closer to being able to communicate with our cats since they're a lot harder to figure out than dogs. Cats don't just purr when they're happy. They also purr when they're frightened, when they're in pain, and even during birth. But are all purrs created equal? For now, it's still a mystery. How did snakes lose their legs? We know that snakes evolved from land animals that started to burrow and eventually lost their legs as they adapted to life underground. Or snakes originated in the water and after they came to land, they lost their legs when they were no longer needed for swimming. Long story short, until we can answer where snakes came from, we have no realistic chance of answering the question of how or why they lost their legs. What we do know is occasionally a snake is born with one of these long-lost limbs and they are really scary looking, like this guy from China. Why do we walk upright? This is a classic situation of the more we know, the less we understand. Darwin's original theory was that we began walking upright so we could free our hands to use stone tools and weapons. But the earliest tools came over one million years after we started walking upright. Once that was basically ruled out, the theories abound. Was it to save energy, cool down, to help fishing? Here are some popular theories. Have you ever played monkey and tried to move around on your hands and feet? Theory 1. It saves energy. When following migrating herds of animals, bipedalism will have spent less energy than tracking on all fours. It also will have allowed them to look over the tall grass more easily to track their prey and look out for predators. Have you ever had a sunburn? Theory 2. Bipedalism was a way to limit exposure to the sun and cool down. Walking upright limited the surface area exposed to the damaging rays of the sun and allowed them to find cooler air above the ground. Who does better in the water? You or your dog? Theory 3. It allowed them to wait in water while foraging for aquatic foods and it allowed them to escape to the water for protection from predators. Who's right? Take your pick. Why do certain animals live longer than others? Small dogs live longer than big dogs, so maybe size is the answer. But whales live longer than mice. In order to tackle this question, we first need to look at why we age, and that should help lead us to an answer. Oh wait, we don't know the answer to that question either. See the problem? We know certain things that can shorter our lifespan, but we don't know why we are essentially born to die, which makes figuring out why certain animals live longer than others a little difficult to figure out. A lot of theories revolve around metabolism, body size, or average body temperature, but they all have their flaws and none have a definite answer. Really hungry snakes. Snakes live everywhere in the world, except Antarctica, and they come in lots of sizes. Because of this, their diet vary a lot, too. Typically, the bigger the snake, the bigger the prey. But when it comes to snakes as pets, they typically get a steady diet of mice or frogs. But rarely, very rarely, snakes can be found eating themselves. Snakes are not considered cannibalistic animals, so it's rare to see them eating another snake, much less their own tail. But in 2014, a pet store snake was seen doing just that. 
Nobody knows what causes this behavior in snakes, but illness or confusion may have been a factor. Expert snake handlers say if your snake ever does this, turn off the heat lamp and spray them with cool water. It will cause them to spit themselves out. Black Widow Venom If you are bitten by a black widow, the venom can cause days of pain throughout your entire body, plus difficulty breathing and much more. The good news is that females will not always inject venom when they bite, and male jaws are too small to break the skin. But how does the venom work? This is the part where science has a hard time with. The bite may contain only a few molecules of neurotoxin, yet it can affect the whole body of an animal weighing hundreds or even thousands of pounds. The venom is so effective that black widows have even begun building larger webs to catch even larger prey. They have been seen eating mice, lizards, and even snakes cutting their webs, all using an amount of neurotoxin not even visible to the naked eye. Some mysteries seem to be so simple to solve, but it's incredible that even with all the technology and information we have, we still have many questions unanswered and worse, it seems like science may never be able to explain them. I guess we'll have to wait for more evidence to shine some light into the biological mysteries we have today. One thing we know for sure, the more we care for the planet, the more opportunities we'll have to research all its wonders. Thank you for watching and until next time. Remember to click the bell icon after you subscribe so you can get instant notifications of all of our new videos.